everyone, welcome back to Music with Ryan. Uh, thanks for joining me for this week's free lecture lesson. Um, I want to talk about one thing that's super important for any guitar player, lead uh, player. I mean, this just goes for rhythm and you know, lead playing everything. And it's kind of a little secret that I tell my students that they need to master in order to you know, become accomplished on the guitar. And that is understanding pick direction and you know when to use it and why we use it you know what's its purpose and just you know the basics about it and really there's two fundamental things that we need to know and it's downstrokes on downbeats so downbeats are one two three and four okay so we'll do that one two three and four and then upstrokes on upbeats, the what's in between, okay, the and beats, so one and two and three. So I'll just write the ands, okay? And again, it's a little secret, and I, it, I can't stress how important it is to master this. If you don't, you know, you might be able to get by, and these rules, I mean, are meant to be broken, but from you know, a learning standpoint, uh, just being a, again accomplished player standpoint. You need to you need to know this stuff, and why you do downs and why you do ups. Um, but yeah, it is it is a little secret. And um, oh yeah, if you the reason we want to learn this is that it's going to help with our timing tremendously. Okay, you might be able to get by, and you know your timing won't be that good you might be able to kind of stumble through things and kind of be able to fake it so to speak but something might not it probably won't seem right or feel right being able to do this is going to make sense of everything it's going to make it feel better to play and not awkward and not jerky um it's just that you're going to have better timing and in music timing and as in life timing's everything okay timing is everything um, so, you know, it's not about the notes, it's about the timing. The notes are a close second. So my professor used to tell me all the time, Dr. Parr, just retired, said the, the notes are important, but, you know, a close second, but the timing is the most important thing, okay? So what I got for you guys today is um, I got some examples I want to run you through. I have tablature for this lesson written out. There's eight pieces, uh, eight examples and I'm going to go over most of them here, and I'll write them down, but if free members, you just click the link and download them for free. If you're not a free member and you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, you need to sign up at my website. You can click the link above or below, depending on where you're at, and you can be, free, be a free member and access all my free instruction. I do a lecture lesson every week. I've got a bunch of tunes in there, a bunch of exercises, short theory lessons, this kind of thing. So, not a free member, go ahead and do it, and you can download the tablature and the sheet music for this and others. So, understand the pick direction. Let's dive in. Um, and I'm going to start pretty basic and then do a few little bit more advanced things or intermediate things. So, the downbeats, one, two, three, and four. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pretend that I'm in four, four time. And um, I'm just going to use most of my stuff on the open G string here. Um, just, you know, starting slow. So, if I'm going to do four quarter notes in a row, you know, they'd be all downstrokes. One, two, three, four. And then you just kind of go on, tap your foot. I've got something to say about tapping the foot too here in a sec. But just tap your foot and see if you can just be right in a line with four quarter notes or you know just repeating that measure. Two, three, four. So about tapping your foot, I want to mention that because um, it's super important. It's a, help, it's a way of guiding us and keeping track and getting a good sense of the timing and the pulse. We want to feel it all in our body. Again, it has to, if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. So when I tap my, think about your foot and your hand. There's a string attached from your foot and your hand. And when my foot comes up, my hand comes up, foot comes down, my hand comes down. So one and two and three and four. Can't see my foot, maybe you can hear it, but down, up down up down up and although 
And this is true for strumming too. This is true for strumming. My hand and foot want to be together and whether or not I hit the strings, that doesn't matter. I want to keep it going to keep this, you know, kind of pendulum effect down, up, down, up, down. That will give you the sense of the pulse, which is, again, the most important, right? And music. That's why you like music. It's because it feels good, okay? That's why the musicians on the radio are so good. They have an immaculate sense of the timing and the pulse. And so again, down, up. So pretend that string's there. So when you do these exercises, tap your foot. All right, so that one was pretty easy, right? Just chord notes, down, 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 down. Those are all downbeats. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna cut those chord notes in half and I'm gonna have a measure full of eighth notes, okay, here. And I'll draw it up on the board here real quick. So eighth notes, one, two, Okay, so we've got eight eighth notes. And here's our pick direction. Whoops, I messed up there. Down, up, down, no. Shoot. Uh-oh. I messed up, sorry. Okay, so, um, down, up, yeah. So another thing that's super important, sorry, someone's trying to call me. Uh, super important is knowing where the beat is. This is not always intuitive for someone when you're dealing with more complicated like rhythms and stuff like that, but it's something that I missed out on for a long time. But once I understood where the beat was in each measure, it tremendously helped me understand what's going on and why why my foot where my foot needs to be down or up okay so if I take this example you know here's beat one here's beat two here's beat three and here's beat four okay and the ands are what's in between okay and I'm not gonna mark through every beat um, and all these examples but it's if you can start to note it here's one beat one beat two beat three beat four really help you understand your timing and you know just what's going on all right so eighth notes again I'm on the open G string I'm gonna play consecutive eighth notes so down up down up down up It's easy to feel the down downbeats, right? That's natural to feel the downbeats. Uh, so if you accent the downbeats, one and two and three and four and one and two. That's easy, that's natural because everything's coming down. But what's harder to do is accent the upbeats. That's just more difficult. That feels harder. Um, doesn't feel as natural and that's something I had to do when I studied with Russ Berenberg for a long time Nashville guitarist some of you may or may not know um, you know amazing player uh, prof pro in all all you know all the sense of the form or however you say that he's a pro and he made me really start to feel the upstroke can you feel the upstroke one and and three and four and one and gotta get comfortable with it it's just doesn't feel as natural practice that on a, it's just a series of eighth notes on an open string and then practice it on a whole tune like if you have a fiddle tune you do or something like that can you accent all the upstrokes that's advanced thing hard to do but makes you again feel the upbeat a little bit better okay so I want to continue on with examples because um, I can kind of you know we can get talking about a lot of different things real quick but I want to show you a few different examples. So example three is kind of a combination of eighth notes and quarter notes. So, so what do I got here? And again, you can print all these tabs out. Again, if you're a free member, you can print out the tabs. I've got two sheets of tabs and examples. Um, so uh, quarter, two eighths, quarter, two eighths. So one, 
two n, three, four n. Down, down, up, down, down, up. I also go, I also go over some of this in my, uh, in my beginner course at the, at the website. And uh, if you're a free member, again, there's a couple examples of the beginner course and about this, yeah, I have a couple free lessons just more in depth about how to read the tab and how to, you know, understanding some of the stuff. Um, so, again, we have down, I'll do it on the G string, sorry. Down, down, up, down, down, up. So I've mixed quarter notes and eighth notes together. Down, down, up, down. Down, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and all the while my foot is still is the metronome. So where's the beat? Beat one is here, beat two is here, beat three is here, beat four is here. Okay? So Mix in eighth notes and quarter notes. So now let's get into a little bit more uh, tricky stuff, and that's involving ham rounds and pull offs. So when I when I use ham rounds and pull offs, it's going to take the place of a pick direction. Okay, not not always, but often, especially when they're, when they're eighth note stuff, you probably will. Okay, maybe if they're sixteenth note stuff, um, it might not change things a little bit. But anyway, eighth notes, stick on the basics here. Uh, takes the place of a pick direction. So my other example. So I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write tablature this time, and um, might kind of look a little funny, but here it is. So zero two zero two zero two zero two. And these are eighth notes, okay? And I'm going to hammer on. Again, all on the G string. You can choose any string. You can choose any, any number of fret too. You can hammer on any any number of fret. But um, so now I have double downs. I mean, in through this piece all the whole time. Down strokes. Down. 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 So go ahead and try it. One, and two. Now you could kind of um, you could do it backwards. You could do pull offs. You could do two zero, two zero the whole time, and one and two and three and four and down, 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 down. Okay. So there's you know incorporating hammer ons and pull offs again. The biggest takeaway: hammer ons and pull offs take the place of a pick direction. Okay, so now, see, I try not to make these videos too long. This one's gonna go a little longer. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna skip ahead to one of the later examples. There's a couple examples. Do, 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 do. Which one shall I do? I want to do this one. This one's probably the the hardest one in there. Let's see if I still have more sheets left here. I think I do. Um. So again, write tablature zero two four zero. No, zero, two, four. Oh, don't like it. Zero, two, four, two. Zero, two, four, two. Eighth notes again. Okay, eighth notes again. And this time I'm going to hammer on two to four. So I have down, up, up, down, up up and I repeat that okay so let's see what it sounds like so I have the double up because of the hammer on right one and two and three and four and one two and three and four and or down up up down up So that's, I 
got a couple others that are that are kind of on this on the same level here, but um, this needs to feel comfortable. These basic things need to feel comfortable. Okay, if you're out there trying to play a, a fiddle tune or a solo that's too complicated and you can't seem to get it or doesn't feel right, maybe you kind of got it. Odds are it's in the right hand, and you need to check your pick directions and what's going on. Um, Again, tapping your foot's a good marker. Um, knowing that, you know, the beginning of the measure always starts with a down, usually, unless it's tied over or something. And the end of the measure always starts with an up. It's like good markers to know, like, oh, I didn't land. I didn't land on a down. I didn't land on an up. Like, what's going on? So some go back and check. I've spent hours, like, on one measure trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Especially, it's always when there's hammer-ons and pull-offs and tied rhythms or dotted rhythms. That's when things get... What's going on? You know, like where's the timing? Where's my foot supposed to be? Um, down, up, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, and you speed it up. Use a metronome. And if you notice, I, sometimes I do it. Um, I should be doing it, but like, even though there's no downstroke here, my hand will probably still be going down to help me keep my timing. Down, up, up, down, up, up. And I don't, I don't think my hand makes such a drastic movement. I think it's a little smaller than that, but it's happening so that I know that I keep that fluidity going. Okay? All right, so I think I'm going to finish up there. Again, there's a couple other, there's a couple other examples. I have one where it's a tied rhythm and stuff like that. You can download them at the site. Members, make a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, ask questions. I can elaborate on this more and do more examples, of course. Um, it's kind of a big topic, I, I feel, when you just kind of touch the surface. Um, and maybe, um, yeah, maybe a little bit more than that, too. So anyway, uh, till next time, check out more. There will be more free lecture lessons coming out next week. And uh, thanks for watching. See you all later.